Shalom, Shalom. This is uh, Captain Uriah, sons of Jacob Tulsa, uh, currently here in Detroit. Just want to start off by giving all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to start off with this lesson. I uh, went over this before. Uh, it's been a minute. Um, basically want to talk about uh, the position that, that Israel is in a lot, a lot um, you know, a lot of brothers are tail bearing uh, bearing false witness, speaking evil of one another which is actually against the commandment that we are commanded to keep right? So, uh, first scripture I want to start off with James chapter 4 so Go to James chapter four. Uh, James chapter four. Come on now. Look at James chapter four and verse eleven. Let's go ahead and go uh, and start at, at verse. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start at um, verse eight. It says, "Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy to heaviness." Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil. This is what I wanted to get at verse 11. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. So again, you got a lot of brothers, whether they are a, a, of a different camp, they may hold different belief of a Shabbat, um, understanding of all these all these different understandings of one doctrine is, is the issue. So regardless of what it is, it's telling you, speak not evil of another. Brethren, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law, right? And judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. So you got to be careful with, um, <clears throat> with um, the way you speak and uphold the law. Uh, I'm going to start going verse 12. There's one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judges another? So the thing is, is that a lot of times is um, you have brothers that may go tit for tat over the law, whether it be circumcision of the flesh. But you know what I'm saying? Certain brothers will demonize or ostracize or alienate certain brothers because of um certain things of that point when the circumcision is that of the heart. So a lot of times I think a lot of, you know, a lot of brothers, what they end up doing is they'll be like, you know, slingshot and stones at their brothers. And you're basically, you're basically a, not a doer of the law, but a judge, because that's one of the two greatest commandments, which I'll get into that eventually as well. Um, a lot of things, man, even with the sisters, man, um, you know, about them, uh, being uh, uh, the f physical head covering, which I mean, those are also other um, meaty. It, it, it retains meat as well. There's a milk, a milk portion aspect to all these understandings from head coverings to Shabbats and feast days and, you know, the law, which part of the law is done, which ones do we keep, what covenants we're in. There's milk to all of it, but there's a lot of meat to it that goes behind it as well. So just want to basically um, cover that point. And there's another thing where I feel like that that what we don't do too, right? This is um, James chapter 5. And this is verse... Sixteen. Okay. It says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for... Pray one for another that ye may be healed. 
The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So it's good that you have righteous men and women that are praying. It's good to have these type of people, right? Because those are the people that you want to be uh, to be praying for you, right? Um, and the reason why we want to confess our faults is because it's it's a cleansing it's a it's 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 an, it's, it's a form of atoning um it's a humility being humble a lot of a lot of a lot of brothers are not humble simply because you tell them you're Israelite you go in the corner you stand shut up you know this and that you you talking hard and you born like a lion this and that but brothers are not confessing their faults to one another and faults don't just mean oh I wronged my brother Yes, that is a part of it, but there's hidden sins because again, if you stay in James chapter five, and if you go to, um, I'll just continue to read on down after I read 16, going to James five and 17, it says, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, right? Just like every man subject to fall, lust, mental anguish, whatever it may be, spiritual discernment or misguidance or even finding the right path as we are the same like passions right and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months so three and a half years it didn't rain because uh elias was uh he was he he prayed he was a passion he was a passionate man and he was earnest in his prayer right verse 18 it says and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit right brethren if thou it's like it brethren if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him brethren if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins so basically it's like when the scripture talks about your sins being in remembrance no more that the mashiach won't even remember your sins you see what i mean this is the same situation so this is why it's important for us to it's important for us to confess our sins and our faults one to another. Let's go to first Peter. All right. Let's go to first Peter chapter two. All right. And I'm going to start at verse one. It says, because again, again, what we're doing is we're dealing with brethren that understand who they are. Even, even for our brethren that, that don't realize that they're the people of the book, even the ones that are still in a Gentile state of mind. You see what I mean? Uh, this is First uh, Peter chapter two verse one. It says, "Wherefore, lying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that Lord, the Lord is gracious." Okay. So again, what we're doing here is. We don't want to be hypocrites because then if we go out and we tell somebody, hey, man, you can't um, slack it. We don't want to be a hypocrite telling people, you know, keep the law, do this. Uh, you got to keep this law and keep the commandments and this is your righteousness, all this stuff. Right. So if we tell them we telling people on the streets that we don't even know. We telling people on the streets that we don't even know. You know, come back, come back to the Most High's laws and His commandments. We're telling people we don't know this, but then our brother that that we know that may have an issue with punctuality, or may just have an issue with, um, or or may just have an issue with um, anything. Instead of instead of dealing with this brother, a lot of times is we we alienate brothers, and that very same brother could go off, and then. Guess who's going to be held responsible for it? us? We will we'll be the ones held responsible for that. So that's why we got to make sure that we're not being hypocrites. Make sure that we're getting this the, the, the beam out of our eye 
before we tell a brother about a little old prick, a little prickly stick in his eye, and you got a whole log in your eye, right? So this is the whole thing about not being hypocrites, right? So we're gonna go to First Peter, uh, stay in First Peter, and we're gonna go to chapter two, and we're gonna start at verse nine. Everybody already know, right? Everybody already know because this is exactly what who we are. And we have to understand exactly who we are and, and actually live it instead of just talking and saying, Shalom, you know, we the Israelite. Woo, 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 woo. We have to live this, right? It says, but ye are a chosen generation, a, pro a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show for the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So like you, which in times past were not a people but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Now, this is the biggest problem that Israel has, because I talk to brothers all the time from from Oklahoma, from just like living there and being here in Detroit. A lot of our brothers are having the same fleshly problems in the spirit that a, a lot of brothers, I feel like me included, because I, 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 I used to struggle with this. The why do you have that? I don't have this, even the mind to even go and follow after that. Not saying that things don't enter my mind, but I have to cast them out. The thing is, is that I don't act on none of it like the way I used to. And this is the encouragement that we have to be for other brothers too, right? So again, it says, um, having verse 12, first Peter two and 12, two and 11, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Now this is your flesh warring against your soul, trying to damn you, condemn you to, to eternity and damnation. So this is why we wrestle not against flesh, but against principalities and powers of darkness and rulers of the, of the air of the earth. Right. So, again, verse 12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers. So these Gentiles like today, they speak not not. I mean, you, you have some Gentiles that are natural born is like that are Israelites that are Gentiles. Then you have other nation Gentiles. The same thing. What they're doing is they're speaking, speaking to against us as evildoers. This is why we have to abstain from these things. This is why we have to purge ourselves from that old man, right? They may by your good works, which shall behold, glorify God in the days of visitation. So the Gentiles that speak against us, this is why we got to do these good works. Because we're supposed to be the light to the Gentile. That's what, that's the whole point, right? Submit yourselves to every ordinance of, of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, so on and so forth. I don't want to get too far into that because the whole the whole topic is for us to basically um, uh, um, to be obedient to the word. So I'm going to go to stand first, Peter. I'm going to go to chapter three, because the thing is, is that if 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 you're if you're not a doer of the law, but a judge, you're in sin. And this is the part of a part of it right here. This is a uh, first Peter three and 12, right? Check this out. So it says for the eyes of the Lord, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So we know what evil is. Basically, basically, uh, uh um, being a judge you're not even keeping the law if you're just a judge right you're just a judge that's all you are right so again it says for the eyes of the lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers but the face of the lord is against them that do evil and who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good right so the thing is is that we have to understand, we have to understand that, um, 
Hey, matter of fact, I'm gonna precept this real quick. What I was reading in uh First Peter two and twelve. This is a uh, First Peter three and sixteen. I'm gonna start at fifteen. It says, "It says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you for a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that." Whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. So that's exactly why we have to make sure that we have good conversation amongst our brethren, towards our brethren, towards our sisters. We got to make sure that we're doing this right. So I'm going to go to John chapter nine because um, this is actually, uh, again, um expounding on what 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 we talking about here again it was titled throwing stones because a lot of these commandments that i'm reading now is going towards um 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 throwing stones is going towards us keeping these commandments kind of lost a little track there i was looking at another precepts like you but let me go ahead and read this is john Chapter 9 and verse 31. It says, Know ye, it's like it. it says, Now ye know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So, again, this is the righteous. The prayer of the righteous availeth much. This is the same reason why the Most High don't hear sinners, because if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, what, what am I going to what am I gonna hear you out for? So, it's like if I'm a teacher and I have an assignment, right? And you turn in a page that looks like this. I can't do nothing with that. I can't grade it. I, I can't do nothing with this. You have work to do. I can't see your work. But if you show me this, okay, I can now grade off of something because I see your work now. I see it. So now I can grade off of that, right? Um, John 9 and 31 is a good one. Um, uh, you know, that talks about the most high here, not sinners, man. So the thing is, is that we're not, we don't sit here and, and consider ourselves as, you know, sinners. We are capable of sin. We're full of sin. We, in our past life, we were sinners. Hopefully everyone that's listening to this can agree. In my past life, I was a habitual sinner. But I may have some issues that may cause me to fall. But a just man, it doesn't say a wicked man is going to get up seven times. It says a just man, a just man is going to get up after falling seven times. So um, I'm going to go to Matthew chapter seven, because this is basically what I wanted to get at. Right. Because a lot of what we're doing, man, we having a lot of problems in Israel. And, you know, I pray for a lot of brothers all the time, man. You know, we got real issues. I feel like nobody's really, really touching on. It just seems more of like flesh and to be seen. We need to get out of that and, and really start operating in the spirit. People really have mental demons, bro. Like really have these demons that are plaguing their minds. You know what I'm saying? And he, and, and, and the spirit is not being called out. You know what I'm saying? And I was revealed this because recently I had, you know, I had, I had recently I had, a, um, an encounter where I was actually able to call out, you know, a, a demon, you feel me? And I never did that before. So I was just like, it just opened my eyes to even like the capability of, of us as as human beings, just the capability, like not even really understanding the power that you have, right? When you when you're walking, and that just kind of opened my eyes too. But I'm gonna read this one. I don't know. Probably I got a couple more scriptures after this, and then I'll be done. Cause I don't want it to be too long. It's a quick little quick little session, man. Stop throwing stones at your brothers and your sisters. Uh, it's Matthew chapter seven. And I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, Judge not that ye 
be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, shall ye be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? So why are you so worried about what your brother doing and how he going off this and that? Right? Why? And why beholdest thou the mote that's in thy brother's eye, but considers not the beam that is in thine own eye? Look at the comparison. Your brother has a moat, like a like a little little wood shrapnel, a little wood shard, a wood chip. But you got a whole two by four in your eye. You don't even consider the beam that's in your own eye. It's like you're blind. You're a judge. You are a judge. You're not a doer of the law. That is a sin, right? Or how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Verse five, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Okay. So again, this is what I'm talking about. Moats and beams. Make sure that, that you're blameless. You don't have these problems. You shouldn't have no lust problems with women and you're trying to counsel somebody or give anybody scripture you need to sit down and be quiet this goes for everybody you should not have an issue with you know what i'm saying you shouldn't have these issues where people can go and look at the fruits of your life and see that your life is in disarray there's no order in your household and you're and you're on the corner street teaching it, it makes us hypocrites, regardless of how it looks on the outside, going to go do the work. If you're not right, you got to get right. A lot of brothers do got to sit down. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, we still got to we got to get right. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather have my brother being right. You know what I'm saying? And sitting at home than rather than have him standing next to me, talking about Shalom and bring it out. And he full of sin. Because Israel has become complacent and accepting brother any you know any brother with just fringes on, then all of a sudden you just find out he's wicked. Instead of trying this brother as a friend, it's try him and get to know and understand who he is in the spirit and how a spirit operates. And this is what happens to us because we don't take heed, we don't take heed to the spirit, right? Um I got one more scripture. Or maybe a couple more and then I'm gonna call it I'm gonna call it a day again like I said the title of this is throwing stones we can't be throwing stones when we just as dirty and filthy as the next man we need to stop it all right stop it um I was gonna go to Luke but it's the same precept um I'm gonna read I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to let me go to Matthew 6 I'm gonna go to Matthew 6 I was gonna go to Proverbs 11 but I'll go to Matthew 6 right real quick Okay, so it says here, Matthew 6, and I'm going to end it on this one. Matthew chapter 6, it says, it says, verse 1, it says, take, take heed. It's like, it says, take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. So be careful when you out there. And you're doing it to be seen. If the spirit is not operating, it's all flesh. You're doing it just to be seen. All right. Therefore, when thou dost thine alms, do not sound the trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Right? You ain't storing nothing in heaven, right? But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Thine alms may be in secret. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Okay? So, no, it's not about going out. It's not just about going out to the streets. Clearly, Matthew 6 and, 7, 6 and 5 is telling you that. Be careful of that to be seen, right? 
not saying don't go do the work, but I'm saying is just make sure that you got beams and moats out of your eye before you go and try to wake other people up about who they are. And that's still, again, about casting stones, throwing stones at each other. It's the same thing, whether they have the, whether they say they're Israelites or not. Our job is to still be that light, right? So I'm going to keep reading. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly, right? And this is where you have to go and try yourself through the fire. If you're doing what is by the command, what is telling you to confess your faults one another, brother lifting up brother. Now I can go to my brother and, and, and either ask for some help, some spiritual prayer and guidance, or now I can, I can, I can show him some things in his walk that he may need to polish up, perhaps remove a moat out of his eye, or you got a brother that has a serious problem. He has a whole beam in his eye. So now I can do that. Right now it says, Verse seven, Matthew six and verse seven. But when they pray, when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard of their much speaking, a lot of talking, a lot of speaking, a lot of blah, 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 but nobody understands what you're saying. That's just like in first Corinthians where it talks about uh, where it talks about praying in tongues. You're just doing a lot of da, 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 da. don't nobody understand what you're saying. Right. So in verse eight, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. And I'm going to end it with this. Verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So and it says, uh, for if you forgive men their trespasses, so like for if you give men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So I just wanted to bring that out, man. I got plenty more scriptures on that, man. I might do a part two on throwing stones, man. Um, it's, it's a lot in here. I just wanted to go over real quick. Didn't want to, you know, be too much. Um, I just, with that, man, I just want to say Shalom to the Torah tribe scattered abroad. And um, I want to just tell you, I love you, man. Shalom, keep the faith, keep that spirit, keep your spirit strengthened. And um, keep pushing this truth, man. You know, I'm up here in cold Michigan right now. It's getting, getting, <laughs> getting colder than what I'm used to in Oklahoma. But it's all good, man. We're going to keep pushing this truth. And I uh, just want to say Shalom again, man. Um, we'll see y'all soon, hopefully, man. And uh, I want to say uh, call out Yahweh by Shem and Mashiach Yahweh Shai. And Shalom to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Shalom.